Kwame Rose here for the Real News Network in East Baltimore at the world famous Madison Square Dome where the conclusion of the first annual Peace Games basketball tournament was put on by a community organization Safe Streets. Safe Streets is a part of a larger web of 60 different organizations that use the Cure Violence model. Now, Cure Violence treats gun violence in inner cities and in particular black communities as a disease saying that their environment their environment causes the decisions in which those who commit murders and those who commit crime uh, make. At Saturday's game, promoting unity and community in the neighborhood, member of Chicago's chapter called Ceasefire, we're here as part of an outreach program that's trying to foster a relationship between the cities where cure violence is present. I mean, this is about bringing brothers together, though, to let brothers understand you can't get along with each other. And these guys who Safe Street got planned today is, guys from all different backgrounds and all different communities and neighborhoods. You know, we have the same uh, uh, health approach as one would attack a disease. The disease that we're atta attacking is homicides and shootings, so gun violence. That these neighborhoods, these communities already are like infected. They, they're already at a point where violence becomes the norm. And so th that's the thing we, I've seen, that it's like everybody is desensitized to violence in every city. Hurt people hurt people, right? But when you have people that has been healed, healed people can go out and heal people. And that's where you get a turn from the health perspective. Central to the program's success is recruiting mediators who understand firsthand what it means to live among the violence that they now try to quell. You know, where we come from, man, in the city, we grow up real fast. And when I say fast, some people ain't got no mother, some people ain't got no father, you know. And that's something that me and all my friends had in common. We had no father figure in our life. My father went to prison when I was three. My father got out of prison when I was 11. So I understand that a lot of kids every day ain't got no father. See, my first role model was a guy across the street with a knot of money in his hand, buying all the kids ice creams, and he dressed real nice all the time. So I decided right then and now I wanted to be like him. See, so that's what got me in it. Right, what made me want to change it is that I almost lost my life several times. I've been shot 14 times, stabbed 20 times, throat cut with straight razor. You know, I had a colossal bag for six years, and, and I used drugs for 29 years, so I got tired of that. My spirit was broken. I was looking around and I ain't had no hope. So at that point, I, I decided to change my life, and then things just started taking off by the grace of God. But even as safe streets and ceasefire are embedded within some of the most poverty-stricken areas in the country, they tend to stay away from the broader issues of police brutality and institutional racism, focusing instead on what they say is their unique role. I ain't gonna, I'm gonna be honest, I ain't gonna say they initiate the violence. I wouldn't say that because they do what they feel is best for them. Like we do what we feel is best for us. But we try to meet people where they at. We come into the hood where you had to try to build that relationship. Police do what they do, we do what we do. We don't talk about what nobody else do. I'm saying we stay in our lane, that's all I'm saying. What people like Kobe, along with his colleagues Marcus and Tim, do blame is social media. We find that one of the number one causes of the violence is the stuff that happens on the social media. It's a fact. It's a fact. So that's the difference. We didn't have all that. I couldn't hide behind a little thing and call somebody something not knowing that they could track where I'm at, and, you know, and all the stuff that goes on right now with social networks. But for Alex Long of Baltimore Safe Streets, who is more willing to talk about the politics of poverty, violence in these communities stems from the stress and lack of resources more than anything else. In a sense, we, we like therapists. You know, at the end of the day, we go around, we help people alleviate their problems through talking and, and actually being around people. Most of my scenarios that I come across is dealing with guys that feel like somehow their pride was violated, you know, some, somehow that they didn't have something stripped and, and, and stolen from them. So in their mindset, the only way they can get that back is if they put somebody down. You know, so when I come across, when I come across, and I mainly get them focused on who the true enemy is, because it's none of us that we see as man. Or at the end of the day, most of our issues are mental health issues, which nobody really addresses. When you wake up every day not knowing if you're going to be able to, I say, feed your kids, feed yourself, pay your bill, that's a lot on a person's plate. You know, so if certain things could just be alleviated, you wouldn't see, like I say, in privileged communities, the reason they're privileged because they have abundance of things that they don't have to worry. Nobody's waking up worrying about how I'm going to feed my kids when I got a quarter million dollar house. I'm not worrying about how, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
We don't have that. Everything's a struggle for us. At the end of the day, so-called interrupters say in order to do what they do, they cannot cast judgment on those they try to help. But we don't never criticize or talk down on nobody. And when people come to me, Marge and Tim and my co-workers, they come to us and we respect them all the way to the fullest. Well, we help them what they won't help them. Right. We ain't gonna never look down on nobody. Oh, you fucking up, you doing this, you right. doing that. No, Because everybody knows it's like a that. problem, but yeah, who, we're yeah, not yeah, trying to find a solution. And then the only way you're gonna find solutions is build a relationship with the guys who's actually doing the shooting. Whatever a person does in life, you know, he can correct his wrong. You know, so that's to continue to call young people thugs and criminals. I mean, what kind of person are you to label that?